For those of you that don't know, CFD Season 8 is going to be a PvP-based season, and with this, this means that all the newer players or players that don't really take part in PvP very much are going to be basically forced to take part in PvP to get its rewards. And I figured before the season comes out, why not make a little guide on things you might need to know before the season drops just to help you perform better in said season. Now, I'm going to be going over very small things that don't particularly matter to very big things that really do matter, and I hope that by the end of this video, you at least learn something new. And if you do, I wish you the best of luck on your Season 8 journey, and with that, let the video begin. First role on the ship I'm going to be going over is the helm. Now the helm not only steers the wheel, but they give callouts to their team to make sure everyone is aware of what's going on in whatever situation you are in. And I'm also going to be showing footage from Kaijoy, who is a very good helm in my opinion, and just how him and his team work together throughout fighting different boats. And with that, let's roll the video. Now, one of the main things you want to focus on as a helm is comms. Now, this is not even just helm exclusive, just mainly on every single roll. Um, you want to announce when you're reballing, which if you don't know what that means, it means when you are um, getting more cannonballs. Other comms like raise sail, angle sail, raise mid, raise back, raise front, raise all, lower front, lower mid, lower all, lower, you know what I mean, you know. Just comms in general can be extremely helpful, especially when you're helming a boat, because if you're just sitting up on the wheel not saying a single word, your team's just going to do their own thing, and you won't work as efficiently apart as you would together. Now, I'm going to shut up and and play the rest of these clips to show you what real good comms really sound like. Feel free to watch them, feel free to skip ahead to the next segment. I do recommend definitely watching these though, as recreating the, these comms within your crew will boost your performance by a lot, trust me. I wonder he's been in front real quick. Ray, raise the front, we got a bounce. Raise back too, please. Raise back to all two. Raise all, everyone, quickly. I want to park right here. They're turning off. Go for double board real quick. They're turning off with your board. Go double quick. Alright, I right, set the double now. Yeah, go for the double now. Go. You can set the triple. Oh, watch out for purple though. Purple down. Purple. Oh, yeah, I am. It'll be fine. There are triples down. Go on, drop shot, Luffy. On the other side. Yeah, drop shot. Turn those. Yeah. Now we're going to be talking about main cannon. Now, main cannon, um, as the name entitles, um, just consists of cannoning only, mainly. Yeah, main cannon. <clears throat> And I gotta say, one of the best cannoners, cannoneers I've ever come across is It's Seductive. Now, I actually used to play against him in uh, NAL unofficial scrims, maybe like once or twice, but I very quickly realized how good his cannons were, and so I figured I might as well use him for representation. You're gonna quickly realize why I call this guy cracked. I mean, just look at his fucking shots. They are just beaming. Um, but the main thing to take away from his gameplay here is he's also watching his teammates shoot. If he sees his teammates hitting, he matches his arc to his teammates. If the teammates see him hitting, they're going to match their arc to his. You can even hear his helm giving really good callouts, saying, you know, lead, aim higher, aim lower. And it shows that even though while he's still focused on hitting his cannon shots, he still has time to help his team raise sail, lower sail, etc. And, uh, and move around quicker. But yeah, I figured I'd show Seductive. He's a real good player. Um, I mean, y'all should have seen it from my POV when I played in unofficial scrims against him. It was just... You can just see cannons firing across the fucking map and just hitting directly on the top deck of other boats. I was in awe. But as a main cannon, you just gotta really focus on <laughs> hitting your shots. I mean, that's really all it is. And make sure your teammates know where you're hitting and make sure you know where your teammates are hitting. And really learning where to aim and giving good callouts. Like aim at their crow's nest, aim at wind line, aim at masts, aim for top deck, aim at top deck, etc. And just lots of different things can really help you guys succeed in cannoning. But yeah, that's the cannon portion. Uh, if any of you have anything to add about cannons, please, again, put it in the comments. And uh, yeah, let's move on to bilge. Now for the bilge, uh, I'm just going to be talking about it real quick as it's not really that in-depth of a roll. Basically, bilge, you grab a bucket, jump up here, you uh, launch water out of the grate. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much it. On different boats, bilge is basically the same. Brig, there's no grate. I mean, there is a grate, but it's you might as well not even try throwing through it. Along with the sloop, there's also a grate, but it's like a fourth of this size. Throwing water through it is almost impossible consistently. But yeah, bilge, basically all you gotta do, bucket water. Make sure, please, listen to me here. Make sure to let your team know if you are almost second deck on a gal. If, if water's like here, this little, you see this little line? We'll use this for reference. If the water is here, you gotta tell your teammates at least. I mean, you probably should have told them when the water is about here, but here is like the last, the last stand. Because once it reaches the actual floor, all those second deck holes that you decide to not care about, you're gonna very quickly realize why you should care about them, and you are going to most likely sink unless you can all get out of it. But most of the time, you'll probably sink if you don't let your team know the water if it's reached here or here. 
Yeah, builds pretty easy. It really just takes practice. You know, I mean, all rolls take practice, but builds probably takes, I'd say, maybe the least amount of practice. You just gotta learn how to jump up and build through the grates. And also be wary of people standing on the grates. If you stand on a grate like this and even fucking emote, just sit here, they will backsplash and the water will go back into their boat and they most likely will sink. Next roll on the ship I'm gonna be talking about is the Border. The border, as the name ensues, is a main border, and for this, I'm just gonna use my footage for fighting a brig that's actually pretty competent, and me boarding them. Now, the main border, your main focus is just stay alive and maybe get the enemy anchored if they're not already, or just kill the enemy if they're in a really bad position you're trying to finish them off. Before I show footage, I'm just gonna go over this real quick. When you're boarding a galleon, you can very easily reverse ladder guard, which is jumping off, shooting twice like that and killing the person watching you now if there's like three people watching you uh good luck getting past that you can very easily reverse ladder guard on a galleon on the brig and sloop it's very i wouldn't say very difficult but it's much harder as you've smaller ladder to uh work around and on a galleon if you've managed to get past I'm usually three people ladder guarding you which is how it works you're the one to run straight up here which is what I do when I jump off here to eat because you're usually going to get hit. Or when you when you get up, bolt it straight for the anchor, move around while you're anchoring it, and then maybe go down here to avoid all the people up up on top of the deck or maybe even kill a person sitting down here. Uh, really, any path is you know a way you could go. It's not like you have to go this way, you have to go this way. Whatever keeps you alive. If they're going this way and then jumping off, usually most crews think you fell in the water. And so they, I mean, I don't remember the last time I was followed back here by a non-competent crew when I jumped back here. Usually only really good players know about that for some reason, which, you know, you think it'd be more obvious, but nope, it's not. Now I'm gonna go over the recording I was talking about earlier. As you see here, we're fighting a DA brig. They're in a really bad spot. You can see their mast is down right here, and we're about to take down their second mast right here. And after this, I go for a board because I'm gonna be honest, this fight lasted a very long time and I was kind of done. As you can see in the water here, I hold out my blunder. This is for two things: one, so it's ready when I board, because last time I tried boarding, they were all ladder guarding me, so I figured they're gonna do it again. Two, because for some reason I'm an idiot and I still think that silent boarding exists. Silent boarding is when you ADS your gun, you board, and it cancels out the sound, but they removed that quite a while ago. So yeah, two things right there. As you can see here, when I get up, I can see him bucketing, so I was going to book it straight for the anchor to our left, but then as I'm doing that, I see him walk towards me, so I turn back right, uh, <clears throat> miss that, ignore that, and after that, I go straight for the anchor because I figure saying next to him would be useless with only one gun reloaded, as I wouldn't be able to kill him unless he was, you know, 35% health, so I book it towards the anchor, anchor them, this guy starts throwing blunder bombs at me. Um, I quickly blunder him. I don't know how this didn't kill him. I guess these two pellets right here just were all that mattered. My opinion, that should have been a one blunder, but who really cares? So this guy's now weak. I run past him. I snipe this guy who just ate a pineapple. Wait, did he just eat that? Hold on. Oh, he got food wrecked, or he didn't eat it. I don't know, one or the other. He shouldn't have died from that. So yeah, see these for you right there. After that, I go backwards back here. I don't know where their third teammate is. This is kind of stupid of me because their third teammate could be down here and he could one blunder me. But at this point, I'm just like, fuck it. You know, one's already dead. I'm just gonna go back here and wait for him to run at me, which everyone does this by the way. They run straight at you. And he goes to my left, and boom, one blunder. So the main things to take from this by far, when you board, don't just continue going straight for the anchor if you see one of them coming after you, because if I just booked it towards this anchor, knowing he's right behind me, he would have probably ran after me and maybe one blundered me, or for all I know, fucking two tapped me. He could have been crazy, you know, who knows? And this teammate could have came by and maybe finished me off if he missed one shot. Turning around and fighting him here. Oh, this teammate actually spawned here, I didn't even know that. Um, turning around and fighting him here, I'm pretty sure that backtracked him. So, puts him at a little bit of a risk of dying, so he stays back a little. As you see, he runs back here, but his teammate comes up and fights me. It's so really for boarding, you just gotta take in every situation. Anchor is main priority. Um, staying alive is also your main priority, so really, you just gotta stay alive and anchor them. And yeah, I don't know if I just said a whole bunch of random shit. I hope you guys understood some of that. But really, all you gotta do when you board is just anchor them and kill them, and that's about it. Now we're going to be talking about a not so complex part of PvP. I mean, it really can be, but just for the general player base, I'd say it's really not. And that is weapon loadouts and their pros and cons. Now we're going to be going over every single loadout that is possible. And yeah, we're just going over pros and cons for each one, which one maybe you should use depending on which type of boat you're on. And uh, yeah, let's move on. First combo I'm going to be talking about is the sword and the pistol. This combo, I don't really see many people use unless maybe you accidentally misclick and uh, select pistol instead of a sniper or instead of a blunder. But sword pistol can actually be pretty viable. Sword, of course, we all know how insane sword can be sometimes especially when you are uh, you know sorting people from 30 feet away okay anyways so the main row of sword and pistol is up close by far sword alone can just carry up close combat just by blocking sword dashing sorting etc pistol can also be good for up close as you know hip firing you can just it just goes basically in the middle of your screen with a little bit of random rng where the bullet goes that's about it and of course the main con of sword pistol is long range now the pistol can hit people from long range but realistically you have to lead your shot by a little bit to actually hit the opponent and it's actually it can be pretty difficult to hit shots with the pistol so long range is definitely the con 
of pistol and sword. Next combo we're going to be going over is sword and blunder. Uh, as you can probably already tell, this is a very good close range loadout. Uh, sword, of course, for sword dueling and just slashing the shit out of your opponents. And blunder, one blunder to people. Simple as that. Main pro, as I just stated, is up close combat, and then that mainly means that the main con of this loadout, your long range, is practically non-existent. As you can see, the bullet spread with the blunder is really terrible after maybe about 5-10 feet. It just goes all over the place. If your opponent is standing at the very base of that dock right there that the top of my blunder is touching, um, and you blunder them from here, you're going to do practically no damage. As you can see, maybe even not even two pellets would have hit them. From distances from 15 feet and up, you won't really be able to do any damage to your opponents, so long range is definitely the con of this loadout. And for the last combo involving sword, we have sword and sniper. Um, this is probably the most versatile loadout in this list of all loadouts combined, as up close and far away you have the sniper. As you can see here, the sniper has a very good zoom. Look how fast the bullet travel is. Practically instant. Not really good representation as you can't really see it. I'll shoot it in the sky and put it away. As you can see, it moves a very quick bullet. Main pro of this loadout is you have really good up close and really good long range capabilities. Main con of this loadout is your sniper and its long reload. As you can see, that's about... Two, I think two or three seconds where you can't hit anybody with a, an actual gun. So you're going to want to make sure this thing is reloaded at all times. For the first double gun loadout I'm going to be talking about, it's going to be pistol and blunder. Now, I don't really see anybody use this combo, just like the sword and the pistol. I'm not really sure why, as this combo can actually be really good. Up close, you have your blunder, of course, and somewhat far range to mid range. Sorry, this one is blinding. Apologize for that. And mid to far range, you have your pistol. As I said earlier, the pistol can be a little unreliant when at far range, as you won't really be able to hit anyone from maybe about 50 feet max. And then the main con of this loadout is probably running out of ammo, as will be the cons with the rest of the double gun loadouts, as, you know, at a certain point, you run out of ammo, and so if there's no ammo chest or ammo boxes nearby or even equipment you'll run out of ammo and you'll most likely die um <coughs> quick editor's note while i'm editing this i kind of realized i forgot to add in the pro mm, whoops but the pro for this loadout by far is being able to take out opponents up close and far away maybe not as efficiently far away as the sniper but still being able to take out enemies basically any distance and with that on to the next loadout and i apologize for that for the second double gun loadout ignore the uh, location change by the way we're going with pistol sniper Yes, sir. AKA the TDMer loadout. This loadout by far succeeds in killing enemies from really far distances or even up close. Main con of this loadout by far is its ammo, of course. That's the same with every loadout. If you are at, say, a random island fighting people and you run out of ammo on both guns, there's not really much you can do other than pray to God that you can somehow find a ammo pouch from a dead skeleton, etc. And that's really it. And then the main pro of this loadout, as I previously stated, is its long range capabilities. Not only do you have the sniper, you also have the pistol. And yeah, I definitely recommend this loadout if you you're very confident in your aim and with that on to the final double gun loadout the last double gun loadout i'm going to be talking about is blunder and sniper this loadout is a loadout i see the most people use when double gunning and this loadout i definitely would recommend if you are new to double gunning as it can handle up close and long range combat so if you're sort of faithful in your aim but not that faithful you can still be able to one blunder people easily and also be able to maybe hit your long range shots now the main con of this loadout is well, i can't really think of one other than just ammo running out this loadout really has a lot of pros it's just the only con is of course running out of ammo and i fell in the water um, but yeah, the only con of this loadout would be, I guess if both guns have a, s I mean, I guess another con could be reload time, but the blunder has a pretty short reload, the sniper's really the only long one, so. And then all the pros are having close range and long range capabilities, being able to do a lot of damage with both of your guns, both your guns combined can easily kill a person, etc. The list goes on, it's just a very good loadout, and I would definitely recommend this if you're new to double gunning and want to get better. And now I'm going to be going over which loadouts you should use while you are captaining a ship, like you own it and you're on it yourself, and which loadout you should be using when you're boarding said ship. I'm going to be going over the sloop the brig and the galleon but yeah let's get right to it i say you're a captain in this loop and this is a little biased as i'm a double gunner but i definitely recommend blunder sniper blunder of course for blundering off borders and then sniper of course for shooting people from far away maybe down here or maybe even through the grate as it'll be easier to aim with this and it would be a pistol now as a border i would recommend sword and blunder the reason why this is is when you board and you manage to get up you can bunny hop towards the anchor and lower it right here, and then you blunder in case they run up the stairs, so you can one blunder them. And as the sloop is a really small boat, you're going to be in close quarters a lot, so blunder is really efficient. And most people that use sloops also have a sword, and so you're going to probably want to have sword as well just to deflect their incoming attacks. 
And the best loadout, while captaining a brig or being on one um, yourself, doesn't exactly matter. A brig is a very diverse boat, as you can see. It's pretty long, so long range weapons could also work on this boat, but up close weapons down here also are pretty effective. So really, it's just when you're captaining a brig, it's really whatever you like. Of course, that goes with every boat. It's your preference. You don't have to use this loadout or you have to use that loadout, whatever you like. For the brig, I definitely re at least recommend a pistol or a sniper just to keep up with long range from down there. And yeah, make sure you at least have a long range weapon on the brig. Now, if you're boarding a brig, I would recommend a blunder and a sniper. Now, blunder, because usually you'll get ladder guarded, and if not, you'll come up and there'll be a person either standing right here or here or even there waiting for you. When you board a brig, usually you want to book it short for the anchor and anchor them, as when you do this and you look back, you have a line of sight of everyone, and that's where you can use the sniper, where it's most effective is you can snipe their helm if for some reason they haven't got off the wheel yet, which, to be honest, a lot of people will do. They don't really care about over sporting, they think their teammates will take care of it, so you just pop a shot right at them. Um, and then when they come right at you, your blunder should be reloaded, and then you can just one blunder one and maybe even hop in the water after they're anchored, and then reboard, etc., and just continue the process. Yeah, for brig boarding, I'd at least recommend a one up close weapon and one mid range weapon, just like if you were captaining it, and that's the brig. Now, of course, the galleon is where it gets more complex because why wouldn't it be complex if you weren't on a galleon? And when you're captaining a galleon, I'd recommend at least one up close range weapon, as you'll probably be dealing with a lot of people boarding you as a galleon. People like to do that a lot. Um, you'll also be dealing with a lot of people down here where you can easily run into people right in your face, um, running around, etc. Um, and then I'd also recommend a sniper. So pretend you're, you're sitting on the bow spread, right? And you hear a border. You can't blunder from here, right? That ain't gonna work. So you snipe them, right? Big brain here, people. Long range and up close. That's the meta. Now, if you're boarding the galleon, I would recommend the same thing. The ladder is very long, so you can reverse ladder guard, which essentially means you can jump off and shoot your gun, um, which can knock the enemy back, or even kill them, which gives you an upper hand on boarding them and anchoring them. And in order to do that, I you can't really do that with a sword, so you gotta have at least two guns doing that, or at least one. But I definitely recommend a blunder, so you can easily reverse ladder guard somebody, or a sniper, so you can also easily reverse ladder guard somebody. And also, so when eventually you do get on, yeah, you can blunder someone that comes up here and then snipe their helm. Again, because some people, as I said earlier, don't really like to get off helm when they are uh, being boarded. Why that is, I couldn't tell you, but that's the case. And uh, yeah, boarding, same as captaining, use blunder snipe, um, or just any up-close weapon, even a sword or um, even a pistol. But I'd recommend most likely at least blunder on a galleon. And with that, that is all the boats and all the loadouts. If any of you have any more recommendations on which loadouts you should use on each galleon, um, or that might be more effective in your opinion, by all means put them in the comments as that'll help other people out. And yeah, that's it for this section. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we've made it on to the final section of this video. This next section is just going to feature miscellaneous tips that I feel like will help you guys succeed even further when the next update does release. First one I'm going to be going over is what ship cosmetics I would recommend using. Now, this tip doesn't really matter for ship cosmetics like the wheel, the anchor, and the sails. It's really only the cannons and the cannon flare that really matter. For most of you new players or players that don't really take part in much PvP or don't even shoot much cannons, you may not realize that you, there are cannon flares out there that are actually better than the default cannon flare. One of those being the cutthroat cannon flare. Now I'm going to do a quick representation of what this looks like side by side. As you can see, it may not be that big of a difference, but having less flare in your face after shooting a cannon can be really helpful, especially when it's really late or early in the morning and your eyes aren't awake yet. Getting flashbanged by a cannon isn't exactly the most fantastic experience. And now onto the actual cannons themselves. I see a lot of people use really weird cannon sets, like just humongous ones. I'll put one on. Like these, for example. Now, these cannons are uh, pretty beefy. These, these are some pretty big boys. And it's think of it as like your weapon loadout. You want a sniper that's smaller, not huge, as the bigger the weapon, the less you're going to see on your screen when it's out. Same thing with the cannon. If you're trying to hit a certain spot on the boat, or trying to see, you know, if they're sniping at you, or see where the enemy's on on their boat, and you have this gigantic log on your screen, it's going to be much more difficult. But if you switch your cannons to default, or to cannons that maybe have even like a little iron sight, like a, a corner or a tip, like a triangle, even those small things will help you succeed even further in battle. And of course, this is just a, a thing you can nitpick at. It doesn't really matter too much, but I would definitely recommend using smaller cannons and cutthroat cannon flare fighting people. And for those wondering where the cutthroat cannon flare is, it's in the Emporium, and when you scroll all the way to the last page in the ship section, you'll see the cutthroat ship set, and it's right there. This next tip I'm going to be going over goes in tandem with the last one on the house. Certain, certain cosmetics make you see less when equipped. For example, the sniper, it's just like a, a brick, essentially. Say someone was sitting down there by map table and I'm looking up here, I'm, you cannot see them unless I look down. But then again, you know, what if you have two borders, right? One's at map table, one's at wheel. If you're trying to aim at the one at wheel, you cannot see the guy at map table. 
You have no idea what he's doing. He could be getting ready to shoot you. He could be running downstairs, etc. You have no idea. Now, this is one of my favorite eye of reaches. Now, if you switch to the Admiral and you look up, you can still see, even no matter where you move it, unless you move all the way up here, which you can still see even a glimpse better downstairs. You could maybe see their torso or their head or even their chest and have a, a better idea or understanding of where they might be. And this works with blunders too. As you can see here, this blunder, uh, just the default one. Everyone has this, of course. This one is pretty small compared to the other ones. It's pretty damn small. Say someone's boarding. Look at that. It's like maybe, I'd say a third of the screen space when you're looking down at the ladder. If you put this one on, you quickly realize the difference between these two blunders. This one is massive. Even when you're holding it, it could block off quite a bit of view. And so this just goes with any type of weapon. I know some of these may look funky and you kind of like to use them because they look that way, which if that's the case, I completely understand. Go ahead. For the maximum vision, fighting enemies, the smaller, the better. First time you probably ever heard that, huh? Oh, brother, this guy stinks! And now this is going to be the last tip I'm going to say before I close off the video, as I feel like a lot of players going into Season 8 are going to most likely sink a lot and may get frustrated with going against really good crews as a lot of the main pvp crews right now are mostly in adventure as that's the only game mode there is and so this basically collect all those really good pvp players and put them against you and your friends and so this tip is sinking is a good thing now you're thinking man what sinking is not a good thing nah listen to me listen to me and this new season it's the experience that really matters and of course the rewards you know whatever rewards there are those two obviously matter but learning is the most valuable part of season eight Let's, let's see it that way. We're all gonna get sunk. No one no one is invincible in this game. All right, we're all gonna lose. We're all gonna cry. We're all gonna cry. It's, it's a very stressful game. Take every sink with a grain of salt. You learn something new every time you sink. Simple as that. And with that, that is the end of this video. For those that skipped around and for those that watched all the way through, I thank all of you for watching this video. I hope by the end of this video you learned at least one thing new, or maybe I corrected something you already thought was true or false. And by all means, I've probably said this 13 times throughout the video now, please put any more tips you have in the description for newer players that may not really know about certain things yet, as the more help they get, the better they'll be throughout Season 8. I wish you all luck on your Season 8 journey. Have a fantastic day.